Hi there, everybody. Uh, welcome to what is, um, oops, the second attempt of recording this curb log because I totally didn't upload it earlier today uh, with no sound. Oops, uh, that goes to show you how out of my mind I am because I've been very, very tired and stressed out. Uh, it's funny, I we launched the Tome video game about a week and a half ago and so many people I knew were like, oh, Chris, you did it, you... You finished your four-year video game project. You did it. You put it out. You could take a, a break. You could take a vacation. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I am literally, um, as we speak, uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, working with Nathan, uh, our lovely programmer, on his uh, one day off on the week while he is very swamped with another uh, video game project that he's just neck deep in right now, but he's been so gracious to... Um, help us out with trying to fix up a bunch of the bugs that people have been uh, very kind about letting us know about on the, the Steam uh, forums for uh, the Train of Magical Expertise and on Twitter and stuff. Uh, we really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to try to do everything that we can. Um, I, unfortunately, there's very little that I can do uh, when it comes to the programming end of things. Um, excuse me. And like I said, Nathan is very limited on his time, and I'm trying not to overload him too much with things. But we're trying everything we, that we can, and thank you for all the help with, like, you know, reproduction steps, the different problems that have been happening and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, but wow, yeah, we made it. <clears throat> it's been uh, it's been about, yeah, a week and a half or so since we launched. And good lord, I, I, am, uh, I am exhausted, and I'm a little burned out. Um, I'm very, very just tired on all fronts. And I've been stressed, but um, but you know I'm trying to keep positive as much as possible because there's a lot to be positive about, and uh, that's why I wanted to, or why I attempted to <laughs> record this curb blog uh, earlier. Um, so uh, oopsie, but whatever. Um, it's it's funny uh, in particular what I wanted to talk about. Um, thank God I, ha I have I have a, a selectively good memory about certain things that I do and don't talk about sometimes. Um, what I uh, what I wanted to bring up actually was, uh, funnily enough, some moments of pause that I had by a couple of movies that I watched, uh, kind of leading up to the release of the game. Um, it was uh, it was within like that last week before uh, September 9th when we put everything out, and you know obviously fixing up any other last little things that we could uh, in that time, and you know me trying to keep my head on straight and not lose it because it was. It was nerve-wracking, um, to say the least. But uh, uh, in particular, uh, the first of the two movies I watched was The Wizard, which was a movie from the 80s with uh, Fred Savage and uh, Bo Bridges and Christian Slater. It was famously known, a lot of people probably know of it because of the Nostalgia Critic review from many years ago, probably repopularized it, but it was for many years known as the, the movie that kind of uh, publicly revealed uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 to the world for the first time. Um, and uh, it was a movie that I watched, I think, so long ago. I, I, I think it was before the N64 was out. Um, you know, because I was born in 80, the very ass end of 88. And, um, you know, I've been playing video games my whole life. Um, and funnily enough, that movie uh, was introduced to me by. Uh, the same uh, babysitter who was uh, she was a, a high school friend of uh, my sister Allison, uh, Kimberly. If you're out there, I, I, I owe you quite a bit for because uh, we she and I we played a lot of NES games uh, together, and um, and she introduced me to the wizard. And, it was, and funnily enough, it was at her house uh, one summer where I was uh, I was looked after by her and her family. I think my mom and dad went on off on a vacation or something something like that. Um, it was at that house that I I formed my first. Um, AOL Instant Messenger screen name, and uh, that was where Kerberfer was born. The, the the name anyway, not the character. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, um, yeah. So Kimberly, yeah, thanks for all the positive influence in my my uh, my, my my early video gaming interests from back then. So um, yeah, uh, watching that movie, it was so surreal because I can remember literally even all the way back then when I was starting to create characters and stories and. You know all these things that I, I knew I wanted to do you know that was when I was still just kind of in this dreamer mindset I didn't really have like any kind of plan necessarily about you know like oh I'm gonna make you know cartoons and, and video games and, and, and you know what I'm being an actor and whatever um, but but it was definitely 
those formula those those formulative years of uh, of of you know playing you know Nintendo games and stuff that you know really got my creative juices flowing and like inspired me to want to draw and um, you know and just and make characters and create and write and come up with stories and things and um, it's so crazy to think that like you know that was twenty five something years ago I was I was very young. And uh, to think that, you know, all the way back then, uh, you know, I was thinking about these things that I wanted to do with my future and leading up through, you know, elementary school and middle school when I was like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do this for a living. And, uh, and then high school and making a little bit more of a plan of like, what do I have to do to get to that point and then going to, you know, to college for it and, and realizing that eventually I'd have to go to L.A. to pursue that dream and everything and uh and then to actually accomplish something like that um finishing the tome web series was one thing um there's a little bit of a different mindset when it's just like you're making a cartoon there's something different about like the perception of like okay yeah you can just you know get a copy of flash or toon boom or whatever you know or help people make stuff in after effects and all these different things and just like there it is it exists out you just put it up on youtube and no like it's not a big deal of course like i'm still proud of the fact that like oh my god i made a 16 episode long you know the animated series like of course that's still very meaningful to me and i'm very proud of that but having having worked in different facets of making video games now for you know a number of years you know i mean like it's been actually it's been a decade uh well it's coming up on being a decade since the tome series was finished but it's also now been over a decade since i had my first uh or one of one of my earliest um freelance animation jobs which was skullgirls i i started doing animation for skullgirls um you know very shortly after um you know i finished college in fact it might have even been around this time 10 years ago that I was starting to do stuff for you know Parasol and Misfortune and whatever like that feels like, like, like such a lifetime ago but um, yeah and and ha now having a much clearer idea you know not like I'm some expert or veteran or anything but like you know, knowing people that have been uh, you know working in this business a lot longer than I am and seeing what it takes to do this um, and the fact that like oh my god in four years I I made a game and the fact that you know the other thing was back in that era you know when the wizard would that was out and you know and I was you know hyper obsessed with Mario and you know Bowser was my, my favorite character and I dressed up as Gino for Halloween a couple times and um, you know the fact that like oh my god I made like a living tribute to Mario RPG and it's out in the world you know like and it's unbelievable and when I say that I don't mean like Oh, it's unbelievable. I'm so good. It's like, no, because here's the other reality. Um, it's, it's one thing that it's, it's, it's finished. It's another thing if it's going to be successful. And I don't know if it's going to be. I have no idea. Um, you know, obviously, even just beyond, like, the bugs and stuff that, you know, we need to try and fix. Um, you know, I don't know if it's going to get out there much. Um, you know, I've been very, been very... Uh, blessed that a lot of folks from the voice cast and a couple other friends have been streaming the game on Twitch, which is, which is very cool. I've been going ahead and putting up the um, the Let's Play uh, of the game uh, or the walkthrough, no commentary, obviously, on my channel. And in fact, it was it was um, yesterday I put out a tweet about uh, the 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 battle with Kajit at the end of the first chapter, and like half my lifetime ago, you know, when I was playing Battle Network and all, you know, and then all the the big influences for Tome specifically. Sorry, a little congested. Um, the fact that that boss battle with Kajit, I, I like, I like vividly. I wanted to do that for so long, and it's like, oh my god, I did it! It's in my game. It's a major boss fight in this game that I did, and um, you know, and and so I have to. That's what I'm trying to focus on. Um, is is uh, is the gratitude that comes with that? Because then that comes to the other movie that I watched uh, shortly before the game came out, which was uh, Treasure Planet. Which you wouldn't think would have much to do with anything, because like obviously the wizard, you know, video games and stuff, and you know, being a weird kid and not knowing what the hell I'm doing. Cer certainly, there's some correlation there, but uh, but no, with Treasure Planet, I, you know, it's funny because I was reminded. I think it was one of Lindsay Ellis's videos talking about how 
the uh, one of the two animation directors that uh, created that movie. Um, you know, the, it was like their magnum opus that they wanted to do Treasure Planet and or uh, tre- Treasure Island in space. Um, and it was on the back burner for so long. And obviously, they had a lot of success with Little Mermaid and other various things at Disney. <laughs> and um, but the fact that they managed to do it, uh, you know, whatever it was, I think late nineties. And the fact that also, you know, I adore that movie. Um, I I think it's amazing. It's still one of my favorites. It's it's, it's a it's a Disney movie that'll never get its own Kingdom Hearts level. Sad to say. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I look at, and then the fact that also it was a, a genuine financial failure, uh, you know, I forgot like what the comparison was from the budget to what it made at the box office or whatever, but yeah, I mean like, and that's unfortunate, you know, that, that is, that is a big shame and that does happen, you know, with, with dream projects like that, people that, you know, creations that people put all their love and heart and soul and everything into, you know, that, that is unfortunate and, you know, and that's the reality is that. That very well could be, you know, that's yet to be seen, but it very well could be the case on on Tome, um, to to kind of peel back the curtain a little bit. And I, I know I've talked about this a few times before, but the truth of the matter is, I haven't made a cent off of Tome. Um, you know, when we did the Kickstarter in twenty seventeen, um, we raised that uh, hundred thousand, I think it was a little little over that, plus minus the fee for using Kickstarter and taxes and stuff, um, and. Uh, and then, you know, that lasted for about three years. And then up until the end of 2020, I, uh, I was funding it actually out of pocket. I was paying Nathan month to month out of pocket. And, uh, and that was while I was not making money, really. Uh, you know, that was a rough time. Um, but I wanted to keep it going. And then eventually, thankfully, after we uh, got signed by 1C at the very end of the year, they took us on when... 2021 started, and um, we just carried on from there, and you know started finishing things up, did all the voice recording and editing, and you know, finishing whatever else we could in that time. And uh, you know, and 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 throughout all that, you know, every cent of the project, every cent of everything we've spent, has gone to the staff. You know, the main the main guys and the freelancers, the musicians, the voice actors. Like I have not made a cent off this game, and unless the game is like like a big success. Which again, it might not be. I may never see a cent. In which case, it'll it'll have been in the end. It's like okay, well then I lost money on my passion project. Um, and then that brings back to Treasure Planet. Um, not only for the out of universe, you know, things of the fact that it was a financial flop, but also even the in universe stuff. Um, I really love if, if you know for those of you who've seen the movie. I really love the, the you know the heart of the movie. Of course, is the relationship between Jim and Silver. And uh, and Silver's such a fascinating. He's such a great um, antagonist for the movie because he's not really a villain. Um, you know, he's he obviously he's he's the bad guy in a certain sense. But the fact that they have this kind of back and forth relationship that like is really it's really incredible to me. And there's a couple moments in the movie in particular that I you know now looking at it through you know adult eyes and, and realizing how much I connected with Silver as a character. You know, obviously you know always wondered if I had the rat tail, I, I, I could pull off Jim Hawkins right now and took the glasses off. Yeah, I, uh, bones? <laughs> uh, keep your day job, you know, say, um, <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levin, I'm not. Um, Jim asks, uh, Silver about how he became a cyborg and, you know, oh, what happened? And he's like, well, you know, sometimes you, you get, you know, you give up things when you're chasing a dream, you know, clearly, to pursue, you know, trying to get Flint's big, you know, treasure planet, literally, um, he, uh, you know, he lost the, the whole, like, you know, right side of his body. Um, funny, the correlation was that, although that is the left side, of course, but anyway. Um, I, yeah, that, that was really striking to me that, uh, you know, because I thought about, yeah, I've sacrificed a lot and I've, I've lost a lot you know, chasing my own dreams and living my life and, you know, doing, you know, having this, this lifestyle of like doing what I want, you know, creatively and not having like, you know, a, a, a more kind of, um, you know, I don't know how to put it. <laughs> I guess a, 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 a normal kind of like, like a fallback plan and stuff like, 
you know, in terms of like getting like a real, like a, like a real job and that kind of thing. You know, I've, I've never worked retail or, you know, or anything like that. I've never worked tables or anything. And that's something also on a separate note, I'm very grateful for that. I didn't have to do those things to pursue my dreams. Um, and I had a lot of support to be able to do that. You know, I, I had people in my life, my family, my friends and colleagues and people that really pushed me and helped me to get to where I was able to get and, uh, and to get to this point. So, and then the other thing too, is at the end, you know, um, you know, spoiler of course, but when he gives up that, even just that little bit of the treasure that he could have kept for himself, um, you know, when the, when the treasure planet is like, you know, collapsing on, in on itself and exploding, uh, it's, um, it, it, he, he, uh, he, he saves Jim and he, and he lets that last, you know, little bit left that didn't get swallowed up by the core or go and they exit out and he's like but that was your dream he's like, oh you know just a but the, the treasure you know now this is just, just a lifelong dream you know no big deal whatever and and i think about that i'm just like good lord you know when when this is the, the type of life that creative people lead you know and um and and i it's hard to say i guess on some level if i achieved my my treasure planet, both literally and figuratively, both in and out of universe in that sense, if I, because Tome, I guess, isn't necessarily my magnum opus. It's something that I'm very passionate about and I care about a lot and I tried to put my all into. And, uh, you know, and, and in terms of just the success, like, I don't know if it's going to be my, you know, my vast fortune. Um, I don't know. Uh, and that's, again, that's yet to be seen. That could change. Um, but I also can't bet my life on that. And so, you know, here I am at this point now where, you know, I've, I've made this accomplishment and I have to figure out what I can do next. Um, you know, also, as a lot of you guys know, of course, I've still been recovering from my arm injury. It has gotten better. Uh, that's why I was able to record the, um, uh, the, the walkthrough that I did. I've, I've been able to play with the keyboard. I have the, you know, usually when I have the splints on and everything on my arms and stuff. I have my posture corrector on. I'm not wearing it right now because it looks silly. But, um, and, uh, you know, but in looking ahead, well, even before looking ahead, um, in, in trying to smell the flowers a little bit, I guess you could say, I, uh, I'm trying to stay positive and I'm trying to stay grateful and and look at the whole of everything. You know, I mean, like, I need to be, I need to feel, and when I, when I say I need to, I don't mean like I'm trying to force myself. It's more of like it needs to come naturally. I need to be satisfied with what I've done, with, you know, what I chose to put out there with the game, the form that it's in and everything that I, all the decisions that I made with the design and the creation of the game itself. I have to be grateful for the people that it was made for, that donated for it to exist and anybody that will ever take the time to play it, whether they enjoy it or not, whether they are whether they are satisfied or not, to be grateful that it is something that they're taking their time out for in the first place. I have to be appreciative for, again, all those people that helped make this possible and helped me get to this point. The the staff, the cast, you know, the publisher, my family, the the fans and supporters, you know, that I could not have this would not have been humanly possible without them. I did not do this on my own. Um, as, for as much work as I did, and as proud as I am of that too, and of myself for all the work that I put in. And I'm reminded often of, um, a lot of people know I've kind of gone down the VTuber rabbit hole as it is. Um, Callie uh, Clappy Mori did a, <laughs> a great interview on um, Trash Taste some time ago, and she talked about, you know, because she's a creative type as well, I mean, you know, musician and stuff. And um, she talked about, uh, you know, just because you put your all into something, just because you work really, really hard on something, doesn't mean that it's good. And it doesn't mean that it's going to, you know, be a success. And I think that there does have to be, you know, that, that's true in any creative field. You know, whether you're a musician or an artist or a game developer or an actor or anything. You know, I think that there does have to be that kind of separation from things. And, um, and that's... And may, well, and maybe not. Maybe even separation isn't the right word. But like that, that perspective, to to um, to step back 
and look at everything and be like, yeah, this is, this is where I'm at. This is what I've done. And, you know, and I can't, I can't like be discouraged or downtrodden or feel negative about any of that stuff because you just, you know, you go on, um, and then you figure out, you know, what's next. And, um, you know, I have to figure out a bunch of things. Um, I have to, uh, I have to be able to make money, uh, you know, just sad but true. Um, I have to recover, recover myself physically, which I've been trying to do as much as possible. I have held myself to, I'm, I think I'm now yeah, a little over two weeks on that new overhaul diet. Um, and I do feel better about it. I'm getting a little bit of weight. Uh, not, not much in the way of muscle mass just yet, at least not noticeably, but you know, doing what I can, doing the exercises twice a day and, you know, down in protein sh- shakes twice a day. <laughs> it's quite an adjustment, but I, but I've stuck to it. And, um, Excuse me, and I do have some other plans for things with Tom as well. You know, I want to keep putting out the uh, the the walkthrough. Probably put out the OST, the soundtrack for the game, uh, probably next month, and uh, and then also have hopefully uh, something cool for the anniversary in November. Uh, no guarantees on that just yet because I gotta uh, sort some things out with it, but uh, hopefully it will be possible. Um, and, uh, and then after that, you know, moving into the new year and I'll be 33, good Lord, um, you know, I got to figure it out. And, uh, and the pressure's on, you know, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly a bit nerve wracking, but, um, but I'll figure it out. And in the meantime, I'm very grateful. And, uh, and I feel a lot of things, I, you know, I would be lying if I, I said I'm not very stressed and a little burned out and, uh, you know, a little nuts and, 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 you know, high anxiety, just all that stuff. It's, it's, and and even today I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little demotivated, but I have a lot of things I have to do. Um, I have a lot of stuff to do and, um, I'm taking just some time to do this real quick because of the screw up with the upload. Oops. It's fine. Second take is even better than the first. Sure. Um, but yeah, and um, and I know I've said this a thousand times, but um, I I really cannot thank you all enough for your support. I really truly mean that. I uh, you know, again, this would not have been possible without without all of you out there. Anybody, all of you who watch this. So um, so that's all. Just wanted to share some basic thoughts. Um, you know, I'll still try to do a curb log or two here and there when I get the chance and. Um, and just, yeah, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, thanks for letting me ramble, and, uh, you know, whatever's happening next, and, you know, whatever the next step in my life is, uh, you know, wish me luck, and uh, we'll go through it together.